What's going on YouTube? Uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick. If you have not been here, this channel is all about investing in Mexico. I personally invested in Mexico and I'm sitting down in this Zoom call with a potential client who's basically trying to figure out where should he put his money? Should he build and develop? Should he buy a pre-construction or should he already buy one that's completed? Now, this information, this video is two years worth of my experience. Um, I personally have purchased here in Tulum myself as well. And had I known the things that Tony has taught me, um, I think I would have done something a little bit differently. And this video is going to explain to you what would I have done differently and what you could do from the years of experience that I have uh, here in Tulum and the market and what to expect. So jump in. If you need any help, hit me up on our website and we can schedule a Zoom call just like this. Let's go. I look at it like this. I look at it from the traveler's perspective and from the investor's perspective. And when what I mean by that is, is two things. You're exactly right where um, a lot of these developers are building something that is attractive to a a foreign investor who doesn't have access to funds, meaning they can't get any financing here. So what do they do? They log on their Excel spreadsheet. They say, okay, we have X amount of square meters. We can fit, you know, 41 bedrooms in here. And we know that we're going to sell them for X amount. And we're going to get this return. Well, that's great. Yeah. And you know, there are some one bedroom lofts and one bedrooms that are renting for $250 a night. But the developer built it as the with the end the end um, user meaning the guest in mind, and there's only a handful. I would say maybe there's five or six of those. Like I've seen them, and they're very very gorgeous. Now, what you have to remember is that okay, all these developers from all over the world are coming down here and building these, and there is an influx of one bedroom apartments because it's easy to sell but from a perspective of supply yeah from a perspective of supply now you've created a large amount of supply and there so th then we have to switch and we have to think about the the traveler who's coming to tulum right and you have zamna festival you have health and wellness people you have people that just want to get away from everything and just see this, um, this chic, you know, boho chic, like place that they've seen on Instagram. And who are they going to come with? Yeah, they might come with just their wife or their boyfriend. So that's two people. That's going to be your one bedrooms. But they're probably going to come with a group of people. And that group of people is going to look for a high you know, a, a lot of beds or a place where it's going to be that cool spot. Why? Because they're either American, they're either Canadian, they get one week off per year and they're going to splurge. And so yeah, they're going to, you know, what's the, so I'll give you an example. I had 11 people stay at my Airbnb. I had 11 people stay at my Airbnb for New Year's. I rented it for $1,300. So, and they came for six nights. So 1300 times six nights, that's 7,800. And let's just say the boyfriend paid for it. So that's, that's five people that really, that had to pay for it. So that came out to $1,500 to go on vacation. It's really not that much money. If you're going to tell me that I'm going to go on vacation with me and my gr girlfriend to Tulum and stay in this amazing penthouse for $1,500, it's like, all right, does that include, I mean, I was expecting to pay like three grand, double that. And if I split that with my girlfriend, now I just did it with the couple. If I'd split it with my girlfriend, that really comes out to $780. So if my girlfriend pays yeah. and I pay, that's 800 bucks. So now I got to buy my flight. Okay. I bought my flight that costs 400. So that's $1,200 for my vacation. Now I just have to get food but I live in New York city. Spend. It's going to cost me the same amount. So I'm really only spending yeah. two grand to go on vacation. And I only get to go once a year because my work tells me I got 14 days off of work. Exactly. So, so I, I think like that when I'm, when, when I'm going to plan for, for even, I think like that when I adjust the prices for my Airbnb, 
I'm like $1,300 a night. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but it could fit 11 people. Okay, let's just say 10 people. I'm going to have a few couples. It's really not that much. And so no. then I get on AirDNA and I go to AirDNA.com or .co and I look at it like, here, I'll look. It's Air. And, and that's, why, that's why I'm thinking the bigger, you know, three, four, five, even six bedroom places because if I'd rather cater to a group, whether it's a bunch of guys, a bunch of girls, just friends, couples, whatever, right? Because they, when they split the cost between themselves, it really is pretty affordable, even though they're in this amazing place with six or eight or 10 people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to single person or the couple renting out a, a studio or one bedroom by themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in Tulum right now, right now, as of Jan or February 13th, there's 2,991 bedroom rentals on Airbnb. Then there's... 2,250 two bedrooms and there's only 799 three bedrooms. And so, yeah. When How many four bedrooms? Bed four be bed four hundred. bedrooms. There's 328. And then I can click on yeah. here and I can see what, Oh, you know what? I don't have, I don't pay for this. <coughs> so they won't show me the, because if I paid for it, they'll show me those exact listings for the four bedrooms. But I could just go to Airbnb and just filter it as four bedrooms and get those. Yeah. Um, but my point is, is that, look, you got 3,001 bedrooms. Um, yes, a lot. And, and you only have 800 three bedrooms. And I could probably almost guarantee you, because if, if, if you went to Tulum on Airbnb and you searched for a three bedroom, mine's going to pop, mine's going to be on the first page. Um, and, and it's, it's driving bookings. I would do it in like June because I have a lot of bookings until all the way out till April. And now they're starting to be in May and that's where I'm starting to raise my price. So I'm raising my prices. I actually had it for February 28th. Uh, today's February 13th. Someone booked it today. And I changed my price from the smart pricing, which was saying rented at 220. I changed it and I got a booking for 350 for each of those nights. And so, yeah, what day was it? It was February 26th to 28th. I got a booking today. Yours is the one of the big mural, right? Uh-huh. And it's most likely on the front page. Yeah. yeah, it depends what dates you put in as well. Yeah, because I have bookings. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I rented it I rented it on February 26th and 27th. I went back and changed the the fee and it rented for 350 a night. So for two nights I got $812. And that's a pretty close booking. That's that's in like 10 days. Um whereas the, Yeah, that's the, the, Yeah, so <clears throat> like what I'm doing it, it is working. It's, it's definitely working. Um, and so look, I, I don't know your budget and I, I don't like to influence people's, um, decisions on their investments because there's a lot of factors that go into it. If you didn't use yeah. my, if, if you didn't have me manage it, I can't tell you what the other person's going to do. I can only tell you based on yeah. my experience. Now I have the mirror image of my unit that literally my, my buddy Jack has the mirror image right next to me and I'm struggling to get him to get to that, that spot of three fifty a night. He's renting his for some nights, $89 a night. Um, and wow. it has to do with the algorithm. I'm at this point where I think I'm just gonna cancel that listing and create an entire new listing and reset it in the algorithm because the smart pricing is picking it up. So no. it's a little bit of trial and error in the beginning because no one knows what the Airbnb algorithm is. But is he, no, getting, no. Is he getting bookings at $150, $180 a night? Yeah. Um, is it the same as mine? No. Is it because the mural is drawing that? Possibly. 
um, maybe, maybe because people see it and they're like, wow, that's a sick mural. I want to rent it. And maybe that is driving the price. He has an amazing, um, dream catcher inside the unit, but maybe, maybe it is my mural. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's in my best interest because I don't know if Tony told you, but we charge 25%. Uh, and it's in my best interest to get his unit to rent because, you know, it's, it's obviously more money for myself as well, but, um, yeah. you know, I have expenses and stuff too. I don't get, I don't get to keep all the 25%, but <laughs> of course. it's, but it's, it's pay it's, people to clean it. Yeah. And then... it, it's my business to, to make sure that it rents, but <laughs> there's a motivational factor for me to say, why is my unit? That's the exact same mirror image not running. Like I want to make the same amount off of, off of that on, on his and he's my buddy too. Like we all become friends when we are investors. And so, you know, that that's a, a factor into it. The other factor is where's the location? What, what's the, what's the, the stuff that's around it? Um, you know, I, I'll give you an example. Like my unit was 430,000 and that's a lot. Am I making the money and it's making a return? Yeah. Um, it's going to take some time to, to get that, to come back. What I know about who Tony is now, what I know that he's capable of doing. I don't think in the beginning when I first met him that I would have, like, I didn't know what I didn't know, but now I've been, I've been working with him for almost two years now. And what I know, what we could have done with 430,000 and our YouTube channel that we have and what we're doing. I never would have bought one unit. I would have taken that 430. I would have built a a unit like Agua Santa and we would have done pre-sales and I would have just had to put the 430 up. And then my profit would have either been, I get to keep a unit or I can just go buy another unit with what we we sold. And then that way. He said, Um, you know, because I got, I got a few properties in Toronto. I actually have one on the market right now that I'm selling just to free up some cash. And um, he mentioned that. He mentioned, you know, maybe a hotel. I said the hotel's a completely different thing, but his, you're uh, the Mookie project where it's like eight units. I'm like, I would have built a Mookie. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I've, I mean, I've, I mean, you're from New York. Toronto's like a mini New York where you've got these massive, huge skyscrapers and they pre launch a condo. There's, you know, 300 plus units. So yeah. to sell a, a small project, as long as it looks good, it's unique, it's kind of got a different feel. And that's what Mookie has. It's all, everyone's got its own pool. And to sell eight units is like nothing. Yeah, you know we, I mean? we, so, sold, we sold that building before we had the marketing material straight from our YouTube channel. It sold in like yeah. three months. Um, yeah, and, and Tony put some of the numbers with me on that and saying, it's like, dude, you should do something like this because it's the numbers make sense. It's quick and easy to do in terms of, Find the land, come up with the marketing, the architectural plans, whatever permits, yeah. and then it's sold before you pretty much go into go. And he says this is a quick, easy project now for them, for you guys. But you see, I didn't know, like I didn't know what I didn't know. But for <laughs> me to yeah, hear that, yeah, ago. just build in Mexico as a foreigner, and I'm like, okay, and, where do I start? I don't have time to be. I don't have time to do that. But when <laughs> Tony sits down and explains to you the numbers and how it works, then it's like, oh wait, yeah. you're gonna help me do it all. Oh, and you already know how to do it, and I make. X amount of percent. Oh, oh okay. I, I would have done that with that route. Am I upset that I have this penthouse in Tulum and it's making me money? No, no, but <laughs> no. Yeah. There you have it. Hopefully this video shed some light on what would help direct you and give you some insight of what you could do, want to do. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on my website, fill out the form and I can help you jump on a Zoom call just like this, and we can go from there. Again, thank you, and have a great day.